Welcome on back everyone to Total War Warhammer 3 in part 2 of our legendary Changeling Immortal Empires campaign. In today's episode, the Changeling, I mean, Carl Franz, is here to duel Carl Franz in epic combat. He and his reinforcements are coming in from Altdorf here on the eastern portion of the map where we have set up our uh, blue horrors, our pink horrors, the brand new sour guts, which are a lovely shade of Paul's void purple blended. They look excellent, and if they fall in combat, they will explode, dealing damage to everyone around them, and a pretty sizable amount of damage at that. We've got our Furies and Cockatrice moving to deal with the enemy Huntsman, who's having a horrible time so far, as the big blue chicken moves in to uh, just vomit acid everywhere. Horrible. Bad time to be a Huntsman. We've also got the Ogres moving in to bully him. And they will clomp their way on across the battlefield to deliver some pretty horrifying amounts of bonk. We've got a total of just 57 seconds for our enemies. We've got, I guess we haven't checked out, checked out a few of our uh, models here. The Disc of Zeech is incredible. And I need one. Put it right on the wall. Or Huntsman is fleeing for the hills. He actually was managed to slay one of our... Uh, oh, no, he didn't. He was just resting. He's not even running for the hills yet. He's just having a hard time standing up straight. Get him, chicken. Swooping his big grabby tail around. Definitely some pretty clean animations coming out of the oh, good grief out of the uh, cockatrice there. Not one I'd seen before, the full body slam, but we get a second one. Making sure the ground is good and petrified. Over on the proper battlefield, things are going very badly for the new reinforcing Imperials as they get coated in metal and pink and blue flame. We've got fake Carl Franz running around just making sure that no one makes it into the flamers. Craig's card charge him, probably pretty confusingly, into their Emperor. We've got him in a pretty nasty kill box at the moment. Sending the Furies over the top to go harass the enemy mortars and different handgun teams. This will definitely be the most dangerous our foes have, as the Changebringers meltify a whole group of archers, sending them fleeing to the hills. Uh, those that are still intact. Down in the middle, though, we have a Battle of the Fronds. As the rightmost Fronds is ours, and he is currently winning. If you can tell what's going on here. Also being teamed up on by all of our flavor units, so a ton of damage going down on poor Emperor Franz. The Huntsman is fleeing for the hills, and we've got a combo fight of... Poor Reichsguard definitely needs some uh, work. Losing in a brawl with normal Ogre Bulls, who have closed the gap now and should render that charge bonus completely useless. The forces are still in a blob, so any one of our flamer units, be they flying or grounded, are going to annihilate. You can see, they're perfectly capable of dealing with small single entity targets. Just a, just a terrifying unit. Bronze is melted away to nothing while our own continues to clobber the devout followers of the Empire. We've got quite a few of these poor unfortunate lads to round up. That is another massive Imperial force defeated. And it looks like we might have been overvaluing those Reichsguard a little bit. Looks like zero kills for both of them. A good deal of their unit are left over. Same thing with the reinforcements. We slaughtered a good deal of them, but there are still a few left, so we'll have another battle ahead of us. We lost our flying chicken nuggets, the most elite that we had, which is a quite sad, uh, but they head on back to Zeech's realm to rest and recuperate. We will just nom nom on those captives for almost full replenishment. You shall be my army's rations. Can we reach all the brass over here? Sadly, we can't. We've got a new Tormentor sword for the Changeling, which is great. That should allow us to win the battle of the Fronds that much more easily. 
with a Zinchian familiar, so not every bird of fancy is simply that. Someone able to change her to converse with his servants. Some creepy uh, mutated uh, parrots giving us more line of sight. Let's see what kind of skills we can unlock here with the changeling himself. We've already seen the Master Schemer and that Void Wrangler, so let's move down to the horrifying Revelation line still. We've got Turtle Hair and Boar for more armor will transformed. Speed. That's a lot of speed addition. And then 30% more charge bonus. Armor of Lies for 20% more physical resistance while transformed. And then top of the class for more spell intensity. We aren't able to actually use our enemy's spells, though, until we gain the 1,000 faces ability, though. Mad cackling. Oh, yes. Gives us the assumed form spells and then also drops the cooldown to Formless Horror by 50%. And then gives our entire army a Vanguard deployment, which is simply insane. Someone was saying we get access to a stock for the entire army. Is that up here in his main unique line? Cultists, upkeep reduction for us when we are in a raised territory. And we also increase enemy upkeep. White evil. Or symbiosis for more replenishment. Less upkeep for allied armies in the local province. This is helping out friendly uh, factions, and this is mostly helping ourselves and harming enemy ones, which is likely what we're going to go for here. I come in peace, no really. Reload time reduction for all of our Zinchian allied recruitment. Oh, and actually, this is just for all allied recruitment units in general. Excluding Zinch units. Bizarre. Or we just get ourselves a little bit more movement and drop enemy control. That's a tough call. We can get some pretty scary artillery pieces if we get the right units there. The right allies, that is. And we got Now You See Me. Where we get more reinforcement range and then stock for the entire army. Yeah, that's not strong at all. We can all sneak up on you. Uh, so let's continue down this line for now. Let's go turtle, hare, and boar as we are currently Carl Franz. And then for the orb keeper, let's go for a bit of... I'm thinking... Plague of Rust to help rip down those... A little bit heavily armored heroes and lords. Perfect stuff. We've not unlocked anything through ROR just yet. The first one is at tier 10, or once we've sacked Altdorf here, which ain't quite, might be quite soon. Hello, Gunter. I'm gonna try to sacrifice my blue yoga balls on the way on into Altdorf. Not today. Instead, we shall tear the asunder to the field. And now it's time for Franz and his Zinchian followers to assault Altdorf proper. Out of the pink and uh, blue smoke steps the Warhammer himself, John Warhammer. He could go tear down the gates with his bare hands. Enemy crossbow teams have started to blast away at Kevin, but he is uh, quite a slippery lad and should dodge quite a few of those. And those that he doesn't only let the Furies absorb the rest with their barrier. Completely expendable, and they move in to eliminate some archer teams. Metal spells dropping down to make sure there is no reinforcements coming, and those that do take a ton of damage. I just gotta keep circling with our flying skirmishers and our cockatrice to rip apart anything that's here on the walls. And gun line actually absorbed that change bringer shot pretty well, so they're gonna get a nice volley in on our cockatrice. Not quite getting through the barrier. Oh, we're being blocked by this tower. Quick the wizard, you gotta move your troops. There you are. Our flyers are really handling things without much support here. Bronze is in on the gates. Trying to ask him to come on in. Maybe faster just to send him up and over the walls, but again, for science, I needed to see how fast a normal infantry tier siege attacker gets through the gate, which is not quickly at all. You really want to try to focus on either battering rams or going up and over the walls with your infantry tier guys. It's worth the drop in their vigor. Handguns are not having a good day. 
they've been now melted away to nothing. Really, what we need to do is focus fire these different crossbow teams, and once they're gone, the Empire doesn't have much they can do to us. We can fly around with the likes of Kevin and our Changebringers and just rain Hellfire down. Furies have disengaged from combat just to make sure they regain their leadership. We can't lose them on a, a random assault like that that they definitely shouldn't be falling. Just keep bombarding away with fire and metal as our Talkatrice dances through these poor Halberdier lines. Those that are still functioning. Or is starting to get a little bit of fire from kind of the ragtag crossbows that are left. We'll send the Furies over to start disrupting that with those that we can, and the Pink Horrors can move up on the flank here to start firing up and over the walls. They do have the range. The Blue Horrors will move to engage anyone that does try to get up on the walls themselves, but it'll also give us a nice little blob to fire on with our Pink Horrors or our change bringers, should we choose. Bronze and company still haven't gotten through the gates. There are almost a third of it the health left. It'll take quite a while to get through. Watch the flamethrowers all day. Those are an incredible unit. We need to do everything we can to max out their ammunition. Blue fire coats the walls, doing just as much friendly fire as enemy. Since our lads have almost no armor. And only physical resistance, they're going to be feeling all of the fire quite. Gonna burn. Do our Reichsguard are also getting to taste the flame. I imagine this one's kind of like cool blue raspberry right before nothing. As a whole regiment reduced to tatters in a single volley, change bringers after utilizing all of their ammo were up to 254 kills, which those are rookie numbers. Just as Franz gets through the gates, knock knock most sucra. If you do have to fire on units of the walls like this, you do want to try to blob them up and get your own archers around, that way they can fire on the flanks that are no longer protected by their shields. Still getting a lot of friendly fire in. Or blue, or blue horrors. Meanwhile on the back line, the right squad are doing their best to make the Emperor proud. Chasing off our flying chicken nuggets which we'll just take to the sky and not take any damage at all. That's the part about flying is you choose which battles you have to you get to take part in. Send Franz and the Zangors in to mop up the remaining infantry. The Fury's getting tied up there. Definitely gonna want to pull them away from the Reichsguard. They are going to fall quite quickly. Akatra seems to be avoiding combat. Get our big blue chicken in gear. Here's some Zinch giving some good old Spearman the Love Tap of Doom. They're not great in melee, but they still have that warp flame attack, so they'll weaken the enemy's armor and their resistance to fire attacks. Quite good. Akatra seems to be ignoring any kind of orders, we just haven't given him any, so he's taking quite a bit of damage there. We are kind of systematically wiping out the different towers in the background and making sure that our infantry don't have as much resistance coming on in. Very rare flamer melee attack animations. We ignore them as the ogres smash on through. Tried to keep them back initially as the Vanguard unit so that way they didn't get wiped out by any flamer shots. They're much taller than the Blue Horrors, so you can't quite fire right over the heads like you can with the little blue yogurt balls. Either way, though, that is the end for Altdorf as their brave defenders run screaming for the hills. Never any doubt. Gunter was a not the defender he thought he was. The whole settlement garrison is melted by our flames. 
We'll take the win. We'll also go ahead and plop in a symbiotic creature cult here in Altdorf. We do want them to build up this settlement as quickly as we can because it is going to net us quite a bit of gold. And in doing that, now we've completed the Reichland Gambit, the so-called Emperor of Man thinks a big castle of mechanical war machines can hold back the forces of chaos. You should show him just how naive he really is. And we are going to skedaddle out of there with all the loot. Giving us access to oh, a steam tank. Me. Which, even if it is not so clever for us to recruit one on in, I'm going to do so immediately. So we've got ourselves the uh, war machine. A needs painted all up in Zinchian blue. We've got our unbreakable steam tank there. Hopefully they do get a little bit of a, of a rework with the coming Gnome and Gunnery School. We'll see. Flexing Meddler. Dropping all enemies' armor, winds of magic, or their spells. And their speed by 15%. That is insane. I'd like to get over here to 1,000 faces, though, so let's go ahead and grab... Well, let's go Armor of Lies for a little bit more resistances, and we'll swing on into 1,000 faces, get that Vanguard deployment, and then start working down his unique tree. Because we can use all of Kairos' spells afterwards, no problem. Uh, for Kevin, let's go ahead and give you... I actually think Glittering Robe is going to help keep... Uh, the chain's thing alive a little bit easier. Or any of our other units that might be struggling a bit by just giving them a boost to their armor. Old Dwarf is going to start with an Agent's Hollow. Let's go ahead and also plop in. One that's going to increase our gold with the Disguise trade here. A little bit more Grimoires. Let's see if we can't give ourselves a stronger military building here. So the Many-Eyed Tribute... Increases discoverability by 10. It gives us access to all of our kind of first tier units there, including our Zangors and Forsaken of Zinch. Then up to tier 3 gives us the Exalted Hero of Zinch, which I think we pretty desperately need. We could also go ahead and just plop in the Cult of Deceits, so we can recruit up our own Zinchian cultists. Chaos Chariots and Cockatrice. Our other knights. I don't really want knights with the Changeling's army. That'll be probably a more mortal-focused squad we build in later on. Wouldn't mind getting access to the Mutilith Vortex Beast and more Changebringers very early on here. But also another hero would be great. Plenty of good options. Let's go for... the... Uh, arc here. Oh, we can start moving up the Flamer Tree. Grunberg is one we will likely go ahead and grab a symbiotic money-making building. We got 15 Grimoires left. Let's see about Not possible. what we need for the moment of potential there. We'll gain 26 more next turn. Let's go ahead and save for a single turn there. That way we can start recruiting in more heroes. Iridescent Horrors are going to be great for us to have. Uh, just about in every army, we can just kind of stack these guys up for even more medley goodness. So we'll spend a turn saving up some gold. Can't recruit here, can we? There's no recruitment buildings in this province. That makes sense. Right then, we have so many Grimrars. Changing the ways is really not that big a deal. Another thing we probably want, do want to stockpile a little bit of. Completed two of the Empire Gambits here. We need to do how many to actually gain access to the Grand Scheme? Half. So, one more. Destroying the Fecundites might be the easiest one for us. Win 12 battle against, battles against the Dawi is going to be a great boon to have. Especially because it's going to give us some ward save for all of our characters. 12 battles is quite a, quite a few. Let's go after the Fecundites first. Pin that one. We'll start moving up north here. Looks like he's still pretty condensed in Crudenwald, Hergig, and the Brass Keep, so if we do some raising, he should be gone quite quickly. Who shall I be today? Excellent. Alright, no reason to do any changes to our diplomacy. Let's skip on through, and that'll be our turn. Many hijinks and many souls. 
Right, the turtles get ours. We've got a new mission issued. Grow your forces. Wars rage the length and breadth of this land. In order to survive, we need to recruit 30 new units. You want to see? Have a strange amount of favor, a war banner, and 75 grimoires. Shall be lovely. But to get around Altdorf, we are going to have to teleport across, which is a bit unfortunate. Grunberg has now fallen to Kazrak as well. Very surprising. Well, we definitely need to jump into teleport stance so we can actually get moving. We're just one level away from getting the Severed Claw, which would be a perfect armored line for the Changeling here. We will then switch from Franz to Kairos, as that's the cheekiest thing to take down a champion of Nurgle with, since Teach and Nurgle despise one another so. And then we will teleport on through a yoink. I'll bring her off to the side, but his army is definitely weak in comparison to our own. Let's come on over to our, our original settlement here in Flensburg and pop in the moment of potential. Looking at the intricate webs that crisscross reality, the changer catches a full moment of something pretentious and into it incubates his most exalted. This will give us some exalted pink horrors and access to another iridescent horror, which we might be maxed out on already. Which means he probably should have gone for the exalted horror of Zinch, but for the exalted hero of Zinch, but that's all right. Rockenhoff is still not building up any Zinch corruption. We're getting there. Then we'll have 30 total discoverability here in Flensburg. Not a bad idea to kind of upgrade one of the others. Help that out a bit. But for now, we're, we're doing all right. Which of our buildings can be upgraded? Or is it just asking us to build one in? We can go for disguise trade. Grunbird's making it no money at all because Kazrak owns it. I think you need to defeat Kazrak. We'll do another turn of saving. That way we can potentially get some more pinks or exalted pinks all through the global recruitment. Onward. Alright, Bearsonling has been wiped out. And we've got ourselves a new technology completed here. Zinch directs his servants to assist the Changeling's schemes as long as the trickster continues to amuse. More allegiance points, more global recruitment capacity, and more local recruitment capacity. Deceiver. Excellent stuff. And what we also need to do before I forget is I have chosen a name. You have all submitted some very, very good ones, but I think the Bedlam Boys is going to be the winner this time. Chicken Chasers was a very close second. We do need names for all of our other units here, so go ahead and take the comments and give us give us some, some suggestions. Just make sure you also note exactly which unit you would like to acquire said name. Wouldn't be a bad idea to keep doing some damage here to Midland. Well, let's irritate Boris a bit. Make your offer and be done. We'll talk to the Black Pit tribe. Me and the got some time. What do you want? I'll join your war with Midland and then you will give me money. I don't want anything else. This good. Gobbos are nothing but fodder. They will like us quite a bit now, which is good for if we need any kind of sneaky maneuvers. Scheming. Let's get them. Not too many defenders here in Weissmund, but let's go ahead and fight this all the same. That way we can show off our steam tank and make sure we don't lose too many of our blue yogurt balls in the fighting. Auto Resolve does tend to sacrifice quite a few of them when we're going to lose probably nothing here. So, more of a steam tank show off. Let's get to it. And in today's episode of To Bully the Imperials, we have a sadly not blue painted steam tank, so it looks exactly as it would for... Reichland, I believe, unless we just have a kind of a muted color scheme on our own. This doesn't look quite Zinchian enough. Either way, though, we should have a good time watching it rain fire upon its used to be allies. Give him a volley. First shot goes a little bit wide, missing. See if they can't land a second shot here. Another one blasts on in. 
also missing completely. Excellent work, Steam Tank. You were making us proud. Meanwhile, the squad that's actually making us proud is the Changebringers. They've already annihilated the crossbows. Which means there's really nothing left that can oppose us here. This is going to be a uh, quick and easy slaughter. Let's see if the cannon can't land any shots. Another one goes out. Completely missing everyone. Well done. Steam tanks. Incredibly hit or miss. But when they do hit, they do excellent damage. Oh, that one splashed on home. Am I gonna have to eat my words there? If they lose, it looks like, nine of their units total. Probably better at firing on single entities then, like a normal cannon would be. By the gods, what is that thing? That would be steam tank. Don't be rude. Just kind of bullying them on the other side there, whereas the, the flamethrowers have used up all their ammo already and are up to 215 kills. It's pretty much the average you're going to get there. Blue fire coating the spearmen. They despise that man in particular. We're going to go ahead and lock them in place so we can get a couple more shots with our, our tank there. Unimpeded. This is Kairos' ability. We've got three of them, and they allow you to... Let's see if I can find it here. Called the Gaze of Fate. Drops melee attack by 40 and stops them from moving. You have three of them total, which is uh, pretty terrifying. And that's that. The fairly pitiful defenders fall. Change bringers land on in amongst them. Ready to rip out some souls. And stylishly, too. Lovely backflips. Let the slaughter commence. Well, that was every bit as brutal as we thought. Only 45 kills go to the steam tanks. We'll have to see if they're a little bit better against much larger targets, which I'm assuming they are since it's a cannon. Your smaller targets are going to be much, much better at dodging, especially here on Legend. Uh, so we are going to, since Weissmund has a resource building, put in a symbiotic cult here. Pretty much everything in the normal empire is going to be a symbiotic cult, unless they don't have a resource building. Scroll of Leeching, and now we've got the Chromatic Abominations, which are blue horrors that have a little bit of a natural missile resist. So for these blue horrors, def defense is the best offense, emitting chromatic barriers to render incoming attacks futile, as they inflict their own. That's only for actual missile attacks, they count as having a small little shield. I think it's a bronze shield that it counts as. We've got the Severed Claw, which supposedly are going to be on equal terms. Alright, quick cut is that apparently the trash guys are going to come today at around 3 p.m., which is extremely late. Uh, to avoid those metal base drums exploding your ears, we just had a quick cut. Uh, so what's very strange is they've got the Severed Claw and the Chromatic Apparations in the same tier. These are aspiring champions as each, and the others are blue whores. I think not. There is no comparing the two. You sure enough, you will knock them on the same, the exact same level. A tier four unit as opposed to a tier two unit. This we aren't going to recruit either, although that means that Boris is likely nearby. How much would these guys be to upkeep each turn? I'm going to recruit them now then. I absolutely love the Severed Claw, but not when they're on the other side of the field. Chaos in Reef, are they the worst on the other side of the field? We will take the 1,000 faces for the mad cackling and the oh yes. Ready to eat ya. That's concerning. Or good old orb keeper Kevin. Let's go for maybe just an additional. I like upgrading the spells so they're more useful. Many Overcast, Plague of Rust drops armor by 60. That is insane. Strips armor almost fully off. Then we'll come on into Weissmund and go for an additional income siphoning building. Just try to get a pretty chunky income under our under our belt here. And luckily we keep grabbing the Grimoire farming buildings as well, so... Oh, Waldorf is gone. 
Oh no, we might have to turn around and deal with uh, Kazrak, otherwise the Empire is going to go away. And we're not going to make any gold at all. We'll turn around and deal with them in a moment. Absolute clowns. For our next technology. Forcing peace could be interesting, but I don't know exactly how long the AI would actually adhere to the peace, because they do break agreements with one another. Let's come on in and grab the Architects Chosen now. I believe. Cool down, spell resistance, and winds of magic power cap. Yeah, let's go for Architects Chosen, more Lord Recruit rank, and then action a success chance for all our heroes. And then from there, we'll probably grab the extra experience gain for Zinch Lords and Heroes. That way we can max the Changeling out as fast as possible. Means to your schemes. <laughs> Here at Drakenhof to upgrade to a Torturer's Shack, which I'd like to do. We need an additional 100 gold in upkeep. I think we can pay it. So as soon as we are able to, that's what we're going to go for. They may have the Discovery Building on in. Yeah, they do have a Discovery Building. They've also got characters in the area helping out. Well, maybe I'm wrong on the Discovery Building, but they do indeed have Gunther here, this searching for any cults. You don't look very undead. Right, yeah, we'll skip on through. Like, try to build up some of our income. That way we can go for some of the more high-tier buildings, and then that will be our turn here. We can always uh, snack on Grievitz, although he might be a bit... crusty. Right, use gets. Let's have a pact. Let's not. Midland moves in, but we are... I guess we caught them on the march. Oh, they're being attacked by Grom and the Black Pit tribe. Do we lose anyone to an auto resolve? Sorry, old Boris. Uh, you go the way of the dodo. And that means the Black Pit tribe is gonna. Oh. You said I would lose none of my units in the Bedlam, boys. Bite the dust. We were lied to. How unfortunate. There's absolutely no way those guys would have been lost there. Alright, well, such is the Changer's wish. So now we've got the new form of Boris Toddbringer. I don't think he has a very many good skills. Let's come on in, and we've got... Yeah, for Legendary Lord here, he has Crush the Weak, which we could use. Hold the Line. And those are pretty basic. He doesn't even have any armor-piercing damage, so he's not one we really want to transform into. It would have been funny, though, to fight a good old Franz as Boris. I think our next skill point we use is going to be nothing at all as we save for the adherence of the Trickster. Pandemonium as far as the Orb Keeper goes, though, we're going to grab ourselves the Prismatic Plurality, so as soon as he does cast, it'll drop all of his cooldowns by 10 seconds, which is... It's simply amazing. It was I who let Slaanesh's precious silver apples of knowledge to rot in And now for Parchment and Ink, our first legendary hero quest here for the Blue Scribes. Parchment has been falling and been seen falling from the skies over nearby battlefields. The scribblings upon them bind powerful magics into the pages, waiting to be unlocked by any who might claim them. Where they came from or why they litter the fields of war remains a mystery. Yet for one thing is for certain, Every word brims with the Changer's arcane power. If the culprits behind this flurry of spells are ever to be located, questions must be asked. Perhaps those captured in battle may have tales to tell us. Or we shall tickle them to death. As an ancient tor te torture technique, I am not keen on experiencing for myself. A win 10 battles. Oh, we've already done that. So that is already completed, giving us 750 favor, Helm of Discord, and 100 Grimwars. Grim Wars. Well, this will just give us 10 ar more armor and then a pretty excellent activated ability that will drop everyone around them in a 35 meter radius. Drop their melee attack and defense by 24, which is very, very crippling to normal uh, infantry units. Like our blue horrors here only have 24 and 26, so they would have a zero melee attack. 
and only two of the defense, which is insane. Always Great for completely nullifying groups of uh, chaff. Okay, so we are going to keep saving, even though it's going to gonna bother me. For your items, though. Scroll of Leeching just drops power recharge. There's no real reason to give that over unless we have nothing better. And then this just drops cooldowns. I kind of like this more than the Scepter of Stability. Come with Discord for armor and then the Potion of Healing to keep him fighting. Sweet stuff. We'll come on over and give you uh, the Scepter of Stability. You know, we'll go for the Scroll of Leeching and Crown of Command. And we're all kind of maxed out on our ancillaries. We don't have all that many anyway. Since Grom isn't our friend, we could move in here and get ourselves an additional land battle win. We're up to 3 out of 15. That one is going to take us quite some time. They really need to deal with Grunberg, otherwise Kazrak is going to spiral well out of control. We'll just keep moving up the up the road here. Rest, whilst I fix my fall. Indeed. We can come on in and get some Screamers of Zinch, which have never really performed all that well in my uh, experience here. Two turns for Pink Horrors. Oh, I'd really like to get some Screamers in. It's going to take two turns for us to sit here, though. Which we can get perhaps some, some fresher faces, perhaps. excellent... Uh, Ambushes in. 175 each means we can definitely afford it. Let's go ahead and kick them out. Can I recruit both? Make sure we can before I go for it. We will force the Screamers to work. Which, under the wrong context, can be concerning. Uh, we have no gold to recruit any more Lords up, because that's something I was tempted to do. We could recruit up a Lord here in, not Needling, but a Dragon Hop itself and kind of hide. Since we've got a cult building here, we could use that to kind of pump up the corruption. We'll see once the Marauder's Den goes in. Alright, back over to the Changeling, and that will be the turn. Alright, the turn is again ours. We've got ourselves a new mission. Research eight technologies, and we're at three. Once we're complete, we'll get 1312 favor, a warp mirror, which gives us expert charge ref or expert charge defense and charge reflection. It turns you into an almost an helper deer troop. And then the ogre blade. Not bad. Nordland and Scaling have signed a peace treaty. And yeah, we've got some excellent buildings on in. One more turn before our screamers join the squad. It'll take four for these exalted pinks. That's gonna take a long time. We'll definitely wait on that one. All right, this will be a turn of saving some gold. I'm curious, though, how much Zeech corruption we're getting. Oh, it's actually plus four. That's excellent. So another building would be even better. That'll start uh, overpowering the vampiric corruption quickly. Even better is an obvious, but overpowering that vampiric corruption faster than in a hundred turns is really what we're looking for. Alright, and I think we will come on in and start increasing the Zinch Corruption here just to help out our squad in case we get attacked while we recruit. This will also start overpowering the uh, Nurgling Corruption we're going to have to deal with once moving into uh, Bethes' lands. For you, I'm wearing my best skin. Well, some. We are pretending to be Kairos. You hear my words. He wants a non-aggression pact. Well, see, you are stopping civilization from flourishing, and actually, we like civilization, so, uh, you can bugger off. How to get ahead. Heaven the Orb Keeper has a blessed change comes upon your champion. A grinning face is sprouted from their chest. Oh my. It whispers forbidden and precious secrets. Your follower seems frail and dazed. Will you accept this blessing? Leave the face be and it'll wound him. Or cut that face off for bonus experience. Let's slice this thing right off. We can wear it like a mask. Sterling has been wiped out. 
and all stuck on sticks. Chaos now we can move on with our brand new Screamers. 26 and 27 is not a lot of attack and defense. These are going to be mostly used like our Furies, which have 40 attack. Oh, I wonder why you would ever utilize Screamers. I am changed. We're going to find out. With that 2,000 bonus EXP, we can use... I think we'll go for Final Transmutation. A really powerful area damage spell. Has very similar damage to... Actually, Mother of Stankia's new lore of Hag spells, which is Always terrifying for her. Scheming. Ooh, do we have to take down mid with Boris? Such is the way. We transform into the One-Eyed Wonder, and we attack. We've met the Jade Custodians somehow. Probably one of their uh, caravans moving Deceiver. through the land. So it's going to be Boris versus Alexis. And it's going to give us a Pyrrhic victory with medium casualties. What I'm going to do then instead is we're going to start setting up some Zinchi and Siege Towers and a Battering Ram. We're going to continue this Siege. Indeed. And that is going to be all the time I've got for today. Thank you all so much for stopping by part two of our Changeling campaign. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like for the light god and a sub for the sub throne. See you all in the next one.